So yeah, bringing ourselves here, giving ourselves permission for this time for ourselves. Very important. I trust that you've all um, listened to the deep listening video, which is a great help before these sessions and at any time really. So yeah, let's see. So we have Lee, Lee Goff, and he is in North Wales. Hello, Lee. We have Stefan, and you are in Sweden, is that right? Yeah. Julie is in Bolton in the UK. Hello, lovely to see you. Marianne, you're in Scotland. Hello, beautiful to see you. Joanna, you are in Ohio, is that right? Yeah. Beautiful, lovely to see you here. Christine, you're in Lancashire, I believe, in the UK. Beautiful to see you. And then we've got Lucy, is who is in Quebec, Canada. Lovely to see you, even though you can't hear me, which is a shame, but I'm hoping that you can sort your settings out as we go along. And then we've got Emily, who is in Berkshire, I believe, in the UK. So I'm sorry if I've... Uh, got on your area wrong but we get the general gist but it's so lovely to see you all here so what we're here today for is to talk about that what which you already are that which is natural that which appears to be layered covered over veiled we're here to talk about self-realization to realize the self It appears that we're not awakened. Actually, you are awakened already. This is it. This is what you're looking for. However, it can appear very sticky and not very nice if we don't know this, if we don't see this. And life can look like a challenge at times. However, this is all natural. Through life's conditioning, we could go on about past lives, but let's talk about life's conditioning from being a child. We're told with this name, with this body, with this identity, we, we believe it. We then go on to get told that we're intelligent, we're good looking, we're not good looking, we won't amount to anything, X, Y, and Z, whatever is told to us, and we take these, this conditioning on to be true. Actually, we're far more than that, and it's non-personal, so I'm not talking to this body. I'm talking to the oneness that you truly are. There is only one thing going on here, and you are that. This body may believe that I'm talking to it. This mind may believe that I'm talking to it, but I'm not. I'm talking to the awareness, the oneness. And it appears that there are lots of problems out there and there are lots of problems inside this body and that something needs to change. When this is seen through, it's seen that nothing needs to change but everything changes. It's a paradox. Okay, so I'll open the floor for questions or you can share something about your journey, whatever you feel is beneficial. The chat box is there for anybody that wants to add something in there. At the bottom of your screen, there is a reactions, I think it is, yes, reactions button. And you can raise your hand if you have a problem finding it 
just uh, raise your hand and either me or Stefan, you know, raise your, your actual hand and me or Stefan will pick it up. Second, Julie, once we'll mute yourself. Yeah. Hey, so um, I feel like um, I'm quite aware um, of the character Julie now and sometimes like I'll, I observe a lot of the my reactions and I understand and I can see when my ego comes out. What I struggle with sometimes is um, feeling a bit detached from myself because of this. So because I can, because I now have this understanding that I'm more than just my name and my character. When I'm at work saying sometimes like when I'm living in a world where it's very nine to five, like on the go, I sometimes feel like a bit, almost like a way with the fairies, a bit detached. I need to ground myself and I'm wondering if there's anything I can do. Um, Because you can sometimes feel like you're going a bit, a bit mad because mm. you can see things that you mm. couldn't see before. Um, and you're aware of things that you and you're aware of other people's egos as well. I feel so sometimes I find it quite. I have to kind of pull myself back in. Like I can't explain, but I feel detached a little bit. Okay. Um, so, and, and I think because there's not many people who feel who you can talk to in this way, it confuses me. Right. Which bit confuses you? Um, that nobody else can like see that. Not a lot of other people can see this are aware of this um, and that I feel like I'm too, too like I, because I'm so aware that, that Julie is a character and that um, I've, I'm aware of my conditioning throughout my life and why I'm, why I have certain beliefs and why things are a certain way. And sometimes I get resentful as well. Like I think I have that feeling about myself because of you but that must come from love it might have come from love from my mom or like my I might be anxious because my mom was anxious and sometimes I get like wow that's there because you put it there so right. I, I go through a lot of emotions at the minute I'm going through a range of emotions feeling okay. a bit detached feeling a bit resentful sometimes yeah okay so first of all it's the character that's feeling resentful it's the ego identity personality that's feeling resentful the one that can see julie is never resentful there's just a neutrality there yeah mm -hmm. i think julian you shared you shared a quote the other day and it really resonated with me and it was about the ego will try to hold on as much as as it can mm -hmm. it was something to do with and and that's how i feel at the minute like it, it's trying to and, and maybe yeah. that's why okay so if you've got that going on there's just a curiosity so oh I've got that going on nothing to do just an observation of it it appears that the ego is holding on there's nothing to hold on to that's just an appearance mm -hmm. right the one that you already that you are is already seeing this going on if you're seeing that then mm -hmm. you're the observer of it. You're not it. Yeah. yeah. So go into what you said about the resentment. Yeah. yeah. There's only one thing going on here, and that is you, and it's non-personal. It doesn't mean Julie. It means the awareness. The awareness has created all characters, all of them, for the experience. So there can be no resentment once this is seen, because the awareness created the mother figure to bring you back to yourself for the experience. So, so yeah. although, because it's a paradox, it looks like the mother figure has added these layers onto you, this conditioning onto you, yeah? Yeah. It looks like this teacher said things to you, this other person said this to you. The fact is that the awareness created all those characters and you are the awareness so there are no other characters there's just an appearance of them yeah yeah so you created the conditioning in all for also for you to see through the conditioning mm -hmm. for the experience that's it 
So there's never any punishment. There's never anything that's gone wrong. You decided to go on a journey to rediscover yourself right back where you began. Just for the experience. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. It may well, not what? be seen right away, but yeah. there seems to be a recalibration going on with you. Okay. Yeah. There also seems to be a lot of this going on, a lot of mm -hmm. up here trying to figure it out. Yeah. It's never going to be figured out by the mind. This is intuitive. You know this. It's yeah. intuitive. So it's seen from within. Mm hmm. The mind, the thoughts are not needed in this at all. Okay. Yeah. They're just a tool to experience life as it is. Yeah. To experience this life. So when you when when I feel like um like I'm overcome with emotion mm -hmm. and I feel like um because I have this knowing, like sometimes it panics me. Yeah. Um and I get um like you know the uh, fight or flight yeah I get like a freeze where I just I don't know what to do yeah um what should I do do you feel I know there's nothing to do but maybe like meditate or something so when I get that overwhelmed so the, the fight flight freeze the panic that's all being seen if you notice it passes even yeah. in the most panicked person there are cracks in that where it calms or there's clarity and it's not here. That shows that that is not who you are. So there's always an observation of that. When that yeah. comes up, interesting. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That sounds very flippant, but that's exactly what it is. Yes. So when this sort of fight, flight, whatever comes up, it's a hmm. Noticing. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of the doing, even in washing the dishes, looking after your children, your dogs, going to work, that's always there. We know it passes. Yeah. So it's an absolute trust that everything is okay. That, that's what I think, um, Jolene. I think everything is impermanent and it'll pass. I just think that, like, I yeah, just... Yeah, and it's so... But it's in a way where I know it. Yeah, there's a there's a, a a leaning into a leaning back into this piece mm -hmm. as it's going on. It doesn't mean it's going to be comfortable. It doesn't mean it's going to go away right away. But mm -hmm. the more that we do that, the more that this alters and changes. It's just having a deep, deep trust in the fact that anything that isn't the seer is passing in front of it. It's part yes. of the character. And like I say, there's a there seems to be a recalibration going on there. Yes. Now, yeah, thank you. In, in a practical sense, we can do whatever feels best for us. Do I need to go and have a, a nap? Do yeah. I need to have a cup of tea? Do I need to talk to my husband? Do I need to go for a walk in nature? Do I need to go to the beach and take my shoes off and walk on the sand? Whatever yeah. that looks like, whatever feels best for you is the right thing to do. But you cannot get this wrong. Mm -hmm. yeah thank you no problem at all thank you just gonna have a quick look at the chat book right so lucy was next and she asked i'd really like to know more about twin flames okay so twin flames is a word that goes around the internet um it seems very beautiful and it is um but it's not a thing that many people believe it to be. Many people believe that there is one person for them, that person's going to complete them. Um, no, it's not that. However, relationships are very important in this journey because they're a reflection, just as I'm a reflection um, to you, every relationship is a reflection. So we could talk about twin flames and soulmates as exactly the same as anybody else in the world. However, just like our parents, our children, they are a deeper invitation to see the truth of who you are. Because the, the, because it's deeper, because there seems to be more of an investment, because there seems to be more of an urgency to be with them, to, to make them love you, X, Y, and Z, whatever that looks like. 
So Twin Flames is simply a label for a very, very deep invitation that looks like a relationship. Every relationship that you have is that. Your parents, your children, your exes, your future partners. If you're aware of this and that this person may trigger things in you, this person is here to help you, the journey with them will be easier. Everybody is here reflecting back to you that which you need to go deeper into your true self, into your self-realization. You chose them to come in to help you in whatever way, to assist you. Just like you've joined this call to listen to this, the awareness has chosen to do that. It looks like you did a process of joining, joining a group, finding the link, getting emails from me. That has all been chosen from awareness, the same as any other relationship. Children, parents, um, romantic relationships are usually the ones that really, really take you deeper. The only exception to um, not going along with any relationship in, um, is if there's any abuse. There's absolutely, um, you can walk away from any abuse. That's absolutely fine. Um, also, if somebody is triggering, triggering you really deeply and you want to take a step back from them, it doesn't mean, okay, this person's here to trigger me. I'm, um, you know, I've chosen them. There's nothing bad here. Um, it's still okay to take a step back from them. They will come through in another form, in another way, whether that's somebody who is in the corner shop, a friend that you meet, whatever. They're here to remind you of who you are. They're here to remind you of that which is inside, which needs to be seen, such as jealousy, anger, resentment, um, unworthiness. They will reflect back to you. So in often in the twin flame journey or soulmate, Again, these are just um, labels that have been put out there. So in the relationship, a lot of the time we can get into argument. They can really, really annoy us. And that's because they're showing us inside what needs to be seen within ourselves. If there's um, a conditioning of jealousy, of abandonment wounds, of um, anger, um, any of those things, the outside will, will reflect this for it to be seen. It's not for a punishment. It's not for you to have a fight with them. It's for you to see what's inside, what the conditioning is, and that is to be faced. Like I say, if it's very, very uncomfortable, it's okay to take a step back from, from anybody at any given moment. But if you know this, and you do now because I've told you, it becomes a lot easier because when a person comes in, you know that they're reflecting something back at you, not for a punishment, but for your greater good. If you trust in that, observe, witness, and allow whatever emotions come up alongside your meditations, X, X Y, and Z, it's going to be easier to move through. When we don't know this and we think that we're just this body and that person out there is separate from us, that becomes sticky. That becomes neurotic. It becomes difficult. Um, you know, and a whole host of problems can, can come up. Now, if two people meet that know this, then they can work together really carefully through their um, triggers, emotions, X, Y, and Z, that's great. But you can never um, force somebody to see this. If you see it and the other person doesn't see it, that's just the way it is. And that's okay. That's how it's meant to be. 
You can never force another person to self-realize. All you can do is keep going with your own process. And as that opens up, you will attract like for like. I hope that helps Lucy. If anybody's got anything else to say on those things, please do. Right. Okay. right. So we've got a hand up from Christine and then we'll go to Emily. Do you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, I saw, gosh, everything. <laughs> everything that's been said so far and everything that's been asked and Julie and everything that you've said, it's just resonating so strongly with me. And of course it will, because it's consciousness, talking to consciousness yeah. about consciousness. <laughs> um, so, but what I wanted to, what I well, wanted to kind of ask is something that I'm, I'm finding is that the, the deeper that the awareness is sort of, going now if you like the more the more there is a deepening mm -hmm. the more that I'm this the more that I'm finding that things can no longer be suppressed repressed you know how about whatever term you want to give it and so whereas at one time um if something bothered me upset me etc etc I might not say anything I might never say anything about it. Whereas now, no, that that is not happening. Mm. So it's not getting a chance to sit there. Uh, it's it, everything is everything is coming up now to be expressed, mm. however that may be, mm. and however firmly and strongly that might be. Mm. So I know that that is a good thing because it's it's clear and it's you know it's just it, as it arises it's clear and it's clear and mm. it's clear so that's good. So but what I'm so sometimes I can see in the moment that I can see what's happening and there's no identity it's just playing out before me. Uh, but then there might be another occasion where a situation has arisen, something's coming up to be expressed, there might be emotion there of some kind, and bang, I've logged on, there's identity there. Mm. Yeah. Um, and I might see it, um, I'm seeing it more quickly now, if I'm not seeing it in the moment, I'm seeing it probably straight after. Whereas it used to be a day or a few days yeah, later. Yeah, beautiful. You know. yeah. Um, but something is coming up, which which is obviously the ego and saying, oh, well, you should have seen that. You should have seen that straight away. You've identified. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like this, it's kind of like a bit of a to and fro in between not, no identification being there in a situation arising where there could be emotion, but I'm able to express myself without being kind of involved in it. And then mm -hmm. there's another, you know, there might be another time where that's not quite the case and the, the, the identity jumps in. This is how it's meant to be. Mm. Okay. So we can think, I want to be in, I want to be in the, the seeing constantly. You're here for a journey, you're here for, a, for, um, for the experience, right? But the more that you um, go along this process, as you've just said yourself, the quicker that you see in it. So, it's, so over time, what looks like time, it's got less, rocky less painful less icky does that make sense it does yes because it's dissolving once it's seen if it's not seen immediately and it's seen very quickly very very shortly after the event if you like it's just dissolving yeah. it's dissolving really fast so yeah and it, that's it's like yeah yeah so that's because 
when you see it, then the ego will put another layer on and say, oh, you idiot, you didn't see that one. Da -da 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 -da. And then you get wrapped up in the, oh my God, I'm not doing this right. Da -da -da -da. It's all ego, ego, ego on top of it. It's the identity. So mm. all that is observed and then it goes, pfft, collapses. Yeah. It's like it's never happened. Yeah. And, and that and that is who said that was it Ramana Maharshi? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> nothing. Nothing ever. Nothing ever happened. Oh, no, it might have been Papa G. I don't know. Anyway, nothing ever happened. Nothing yeah. ever happened. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> poof, gone. But yeah. but often it seems, and I'm sure the, there's people on this call or people that will watch the YouTube back or whatever that are like, you know, well these sticky situations and X, Y, and Z and this pain sticks around for a long time, you know, and I, I can't see it like that. And that's why, why we have these calls and, you know, meditations. The calls are not required, meditations not required, but they certainly help. They certainly help to, for us to trust, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing is needed for us to see the true self because it's already here already shining there's nothing to change but if we're very condensed in this identity that I am just this person then that doesn't feel a very nice uh, way to live no so no. the fact that you're sort of catching this quickly and if you if you notice that catching isn't you're not doing anything it's just a noticing like there's nothing that you can do to catch that. There's nothing you can do to notice it. It's happening more and more naturally. Yeah. Because you're more um, in the seeing, you're more noticing the seeing than you are contracted in this identity. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank no you. Thank you for speaking. <laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> right um let's see i'll come to you in a second julie i'll just read this from um emily would love to hear more on why things that felt like support falls away for me that's new age healing modalities crystals angels card angel cards yoga meditation suddenly just no longer feeling good or resonating at all right okay so that can that can feel a little bit like oh you know I had something that was really uh, helpful and beautiful and it gave me so much good feelings and now I'm sort of you know left in limbo and I've got nothing to hang on to it's very very common for these things to fall away because they're not actually needed um, they are what I'd call stepping stones. So a stepping stone may be that on part of your journey was um, conspiracies. So you started to see things, look through, uh, you know, there's something different going on here in life than I imagined. And a lot of that could be um, that it was, you know, the government are, you know not very nice people or whatever uh all of it's a story um so is the fact that um you know angel cards um psychic abilities um yoga you know all these things uh, none of them are needed to realize the true self because the true self is this living the life that it is already and already has um we just got conditioned to think that something else was going to save us. And it, there's nothing wrong with going down uh, these paths at all. Um, there's nothing wrong with having therapy should we need it. There's nothing wrong with, um, you know, getting some, um, what appears to be healing from crystals, um, playing around with tarot and angel cards. This can still actually carry on after self-realization the difference is that it's, it's seen that it's not needed so um you know somebody may go and do a yoga session just as part of their their 
you know, their life. Um, no different to somebody that goes and does pottery or, you know, any other hobby. Um, if they're helpful, if you enjoy them, then go and go ahead and do them. The reason that they start falling away is because it's starting to be seen that they're not actually what gave you um, that pleasure. They were merely stepping stones towards a deeper seeing, a deeper peace, a deeper love that you truly are. What you truly are needs nothing, has nothing. It just is. And it's non-personal, which means it's not this body, it's not this mind. All of what this body and mind are doing is just a story, kind of like a dream at night. And in a dream, anything can come into the picture, a relationship, a big scary bear, um, I don't know, uh, anything can come in. And that's the same with this life. So with the things like, you know, there are angel cards and there are angels looking after us. Yes, there are, but they are also from the one consciousness. So there's no hierarchy, there's nothing higher than what you truly are. The awareness created all and everything. So there's one thing going on, that is the awareness. It created these bodies, it created angels, it created, created the crystals, it created the trees, the frog in the back garden that's jumping in the pond, and it also created your dog having a pee in the garden. All of it is the magical mystery. Okay, so I hope that helps. Like I say, it doesn't mean that you don't need to go and do these things. And uh, the one for me that is the, um, the best anchoring point is the meditation. If you can dedicate to daily meditation, again, it's not needed, but it's very helpful. Very helpful. Um, the meditations that I lead are intuitive. So they come from the awareness. Um, there's all different ones out there. If something resonates with you and you want to go and try it, that's absolutely fine. Um, okay. Just let me double check here. If, if those, the ones that are doing in the chat box, if you've got anything else, just add it in the chat box. That's absolutely fine. Um, Julie, did you have your hand up? Yes, I was going to ask Christine, does she ever um, know it's happening? but can't stop herself so it's almost <laughs> like the you know it's I did it the other day with my mum like I had a proper tantrum on the phone and I could I was so aware and then afterwards I was quite amused by myself I knew it was happening I, I felt like I could have stopped it but I didn't want to like I just like yeah um, so it's almost like you know when you're a teenager and you say something and then afterwards you're like oh mm. it felt like that but I knew what I was doing like I was very aware of it and then afterwards I was a bit like oh what did I do Right, so it feels like she ever. Well, let ever me just happened. add something in there then. The one that's going, oh, what did I do? Is the awareness. No, that's the no. one. That's the ego because it's ah, saying right. you've done something wrong. Yeah. Now, obviously, it doesn't mean that we go around beating people up or being mean to people. But if something comes out of your mouth, it's got to like, come out. I think. Yeah. Well, if it if it happens, it happens like nothing really is going to nothing bad's going to happen um you know like i said it's similar to a dream at night so if somebody yeah. comes into the picture in a dream and you have an argument with them you don't wake up and go oh, yeah that's awful it, it was almost like i was a child though the way that i was reacting like i'm always i always because i've got three sisters and a brother and it was just about a lift home and i was like oh i'm always last on the list and I could, I knew I was saying it and I was like, oh my gosh, like that is like, what are you doing? So the, there is a natural, the, in this seeing, there are natural boundaries. In this seeing, there is natural love, natural peace, natural confidence. It's all very natural. It's not learned, it's innate and it's seen, right? What seems to a be going on with you here is a, a calibrate a recalibration mm. yeah 
And one of those is seeing your natural boundaries. So mm -hmm. just because this, this the awareness is, is, is all peace, all love, doesn't mean that we allow this character to be, um, you know, walked over or a doormat or whatever. So it seems like what's coming into the picture for you is for you to remember those natural boundaries. And that can be like a recalibration. So it might be that you have an argument here or somebody cuts you up in the car over there. Yeah. That's definitely it's okay what I feel to stand like, up yeah. for yourself. Definitely feel like it's recalibration. Yeah. 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 So it's that once it's happened and you've had that argument, it's absolutely fine to, you know, whatever it looks like later on, ring mum, sorry. Mm. You know, I was having a bit of a bad moment there. Yeah. Let's be friends. I it's okay that, yeah. to do that. Yeah. But it's equally important to recognise that the one beating yourself up for it isn't you. Yeah. The one beating yourself up is the one that's going, oh, I shouldn't do anything bad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Thank more you. that you see that, the less these arguments come up. Yes. Because yeah. you know that if, if mum is giving brother, sister, niece, whatever, lifts everywhere, and she says to you, oh, no, I'm too busy. Well, what's going on there? Yeah. what's going on there are you being punished is life unfair mm. or is life saying to you let's bring you back to your natural boundaries let's yeah. see what your beliefs are within that are going to be be looked mm -hmm. through yeah the more that we dissolve those those beliefs that you know i'm not as worthy as them mm -hmm x y and z and also that i can actually stand up for myself right in a loving way once mm -hmm. these things are seen the less of that you'll see on the outside because it's not needed anymore yeah thank you yeah okay no problem oh sorry julie you wanted to ask um christine didn't you you can go ahead if you want. I was just asking Christine. I feel like she's like at a similar sort of recalibration as me. <laughs> like, you know, like if, if she's actually aware of what's going on sometimes in the moment, but she can't stop herself. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I think it can be. It, it can be like that sometimes. But, it, you know, and, I, and I've just sort of had a, a kind of mini realisation there while you were talking about that, Julie, that whatever is coming up is meant to be coming yeah. up however and in what way it's being expressed it's coming up because it, it has to be released yeah. and it could be it could be something that's being presented in the moment that has absolutely nothing really to do with with the the the, the being the person that's in front of you yeah. it can be from years ago yeah but it and needs to come out yeah it, it it's it it needs to be cleared it's time is what it's saying it's time so yes it can be in in that way that that you described yes yes yeah beautiful so let me just jump into something there then because this is very important is you just said there that it needs to come up it wants to come up it wants to be seen this is absolutely true now, this is why I recommend the daily meditations and these mm -hmm. calls, because if there is deep conditioning, it can bring up deep anger, right? And it can bring up all sorts of emotions. And in that, you've just said there, Julie, that you can see it going on. It still happens. That's because the emotion is so <clears throat> like that. Yeah. And yet there's a seeing now that I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Now, what we do in that instance is we have a daily meditation and that's a safe space for you to sit down and take a look at what's coming up in my experience. Everything to be seen, everything to be dissolved through, every invitation will come up in your meditations or it will come up anyway as you go about your life. Now, if there's a deep anger going on, for example, 
we may go out in the street, somebody triggers us, which is absolutely fine, it's meant to be happening, but we could get into a real big altercation, we could fight them, we could get into trouble. You know, wars are created because of this stuff. Yeah, people go to prison because of this stuff. Now, you know, that's the extreme. But we don't, you know, we don't want to be um, arguing with our parents, even if it's so, even if I'm telling you that it's fine, we don't want to live that type of life clearly. So we use the meditation and that allows us the sp safe space, sitting down at home in a safe environment for this stuff to come up and be dissolved in the meditation rather than out there. It's going to happen either way. But doing it without the meditation, unless you're very, very, very clear and, uh, you know, very trusting in this, you can get caught out like that. And even you've just said you're, you know, you're even seeing yourself doing it, but it, and you've got so much awareness. You've been on this, you know, path for, for a, a quite a while, you know, and you've got a very good understanding. You know what the awareness is. And yet even you get caught out. Yeah, which is absolutely fine. But if we come back to that safe space, that beautiful space at home, allowing it to dissolve at home, you're going to be able to um, interact better. You won't have so much of a rocky relationship with parents, with partners. Um, things will look and feel a lot better. Yeah. So Marianne has said, I can relate to all of what Julie said, but also have a feeling of not fitting in. Okay. Relate to all of what Julie said. Hello. Are you there, Marianne? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I can relate to most of everything that's been said since the start, but um, something that's really coming up. Um, is the fact you're saying this is kind of like a dream we're living. Yeah. And that kind of, in one sense, it gives me hope to dream the life I want, but also gives me fear because I feel I don't know where to start. I'm kind of lacking and not fitting in and feeling what's the point of it all, really? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's very common for this to happen. So, Just where to go next. Yeah. So there's nowhere for you to go next. This mm. is just happening. You've come on this call. You've got your meditations. You've got a life to lead. That's it. Now, there's a curiosity that you need to have when this comes up of, I don't, well, I don't feel like I fit in. There's fear coming up that this is, this is like a dream. Okay. You, there needs to be an awareness of it because that fear that comes up comes in waves. Behind it is the piece that you really are, okay? So mm -hmm. this fear will come up, and like I said, meditations can help because you can sit with that fear in that. Yeah, and yeah. that's something I have been doing since um, meeting yourself and allowing that to pass, and I do feel it is really helping. Good. Um, I'm still on that journey. There's still anxiety coming up, like Julie yeah. said, um, where I kind of feel anxious that I can sit with it. But it's coming, um, you know, getting better gradually. Good. But, yeah, I just feel I'm in a sort of parallel universe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... When we're in that space, it's about having a deep, deep trust. I mean, we've had some some really lovely phone calls and um, it's having that trust. And I think one part for me when I was in my process was I could see that all these, um, these characters that look like spiritual teachers or whatever, that they had seen something that I hadn't that they um, were living through um, in, you know, in a, living a life of peace. So I trusted 
what they were saying and I really really went for it in that uh, yeah. in that trusting of it Aww. you know I, I wouldn't let anything sort of get in the way of of me trusting mm -hmm. um then there was obviously life situations that came in that Aww. triggered me x y and z is that a dog is that my dog on these oh are you hearing a dog snoring oh, it's yours <laughs> it's, it's mine my... oh it's she's on my right. lap that's, that's <laughs> fine i thought it was mine i thought she was yeah, crying it's mine. um Aww. so Aww. yeah so it's having that Aww. trust marianne um I know that you've um, experienced this, these moments of peace. Um, now, another thing which can often be triggering is that we're not going to live in it. We, when self-realized, there isn't peace constantly. Okay, so emotions still arise here because we're living in, you know, a human uh, story. Okay, so... Yeah similar to to in a dream when you're in a dream there's um you may be walking around in the dream and a, a grizzly bear comes out and that character in that dream is like <gasps> right but then you wake up and you're like oh that may still re be resonant inside the body there may still be that feeling that that sort of lingers on but there's this yeah. sort of oh it wasn't real okay yeah. it's very yeah. similar to that yeah 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 um, uh, and the, like christine was saying before the more that she's going into this into her process the quicker it's being caught so when we're very condensed in this body and believing that we're just this body um, uh, those emotions uh, can really run away with themselves spiral uh, off into what looks like very bad mental health issues and X, Y, and Z and not a very nice Aww. life at all. Yeah. It's still okay Aww. in that, but it just doesn't feel so nice, Aww. right? So yeah. the more that you deepen Aww. into this process, the more that you're going to catch yourself going off on one, let's say, going mm -hmm. off onto this fear, going off onto, oh, what if this, what if that? Now, if you notice in the meditation, I say, when... A thought comes up when it's noticed it's noticed just bring yourself back. Yeah. that you can do all day every day no yeah. matter how far your mind has gone off no matter how intense this emotion is you can do that meditating all day long so yeah. once you notice oh my gosh i was i'd gone off into you know fear of what's joe saying about this being a dream you know? yeah as soon as you notice that, don't need any more ammo. It's just, mm. oh, curious. Yeah, just okay. notice it like many other thoughts. Yeah, I, I what understand. Happens is, what happens is that spiral stops going off so much and so far. Yeah. Yeah, and you will notice it quicker. Yeah. That's what the meditation does yeah i can understand that and yeah that's something i've been doing i think just needing some guidance along that and grounding like julie says and i think you answered that with um you know whether you need a cup of tea or to talk to someone yeah yeah, yeah. And just a reminder of uh the insight that came to me i think we've spoken about this before is um when um is what would I do if I love myself? It's a really simple one. So if you're feeling all over the place, uh, you know, confused, I don't know what to do today, what the hell's going on? You know, what's Joe talking about? I'm not getting anywhere. You know, I don't know what to eat, anything. What would yeah. I do? It's just an a inner, not from here, just an inner, what would I do if I truly loved myself? It's what children do. Children will go, oh, I feel horrible. I want to go and play on my friends. Oh, yeah. I feel like this. Oh, I'm going to go and get an orange juice. Right? Yeah. So what would I do if I truly love myself? Brings you back to that, that knowing. And it may come up as a surprise. So it may be, um, you know, go and pet my dog. 
it may be something really big like I want a shopping spree, uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those examples. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think it is coming up because the things that used to give me fulfilment, maybe like shopping, have gone. I don't want stuff. So it's looking for new things, simple, yeah. more real so, things. As I said before, this awareness has nothing and needs nothing. It's peace and love without the need for anything. But paradoxically, there is an enjoyment from this human side to do things. So yeah. if I've got an old car and I get a newer car, that's a beautiful thing. It's seen as a gift from this life to this life. However, there's not this, oh, that person's got a new car and I want a new car. Yeah. Right? There's none of that going on. Yeah. But if a new car comes into the picture, there's still a joy for that. If a new yeah. jumper comes into the picture while I'm out shopping and it feels really soft and it fits me really well, there's a joy for that. But there's not yeah. looking at other people and going, oh, they've got a designer jumper and I've got a rubbish one. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it just doesn't it just doesn't come into the picture. Yeah. So we can that's... still enjoy hobbies. We can still enjoy everything that we did before but it's not in a neurotic or it needs to be this way. It needs to be that way. And it doesn't need to be this way. Yeah. You are exactly where you need to be. Exactly where you need to be. That's, a, a, that. yeah. That's a phrase that I always bring to my mind, which helps. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if anything else Thank comes up for you, um, you know, get in touch. And, you know, there's the blog. You can, you can always ask me questions on there. Can always mm -hmm. reach out to me um you know there's lots lots that you can do thank you so no much problem. no problem it's a pleasure just check the no hands up so let's check yeah So, mary you again, you've said, if we choose them, do they also choose us? Is our purpose to learn before our next life? Do you mean if we choose other people, like parents, yeah, if we, parents? Yeah, as you said earlier, if we're choosing these people in our life, did they choose us? If they're in this life with us? Yeah, so paradoxically, yes. Okay, so we're all helping each other, everybody. Okay, okay. Um, some That's are conscious good. of this and some are not conscious mm -hmm. of this. Some are starting to see this. Some are completely what looks like blind to this. Yeah. yeah. But then paradoxically the awareness created the whole thing just for the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um... So you could say, yes, your mother chose to have you and you had a illness when you were born. And that was to bring, that was to perhaps stop your mother in her tracks. Um, your mother was going off on, on this world of, you know, I'm just this body and everything's, you know, rubbish and I've got horrible life. And then she has this baby and it's born poorly and that stops her in her tracks. And she, you know, starts to come further inward along with it, lots of other things that are going on yeah um yeah yeah i kind of see that with my husband his life was going off track he had an accident which i always say saved him brought him to another a new life better life although maybe suffering in pain it could have went worse he might not have been here so 
And I think I've I've had that experience myself as well as an incident make, uh, feeling that I've been saved. Yeah. Although it was a horrible experience. Yeah. So nothing that happens to us is a mistake. Even yeah. the panic attacks, even the anxiety, even the car accident. And that sounds yeah. really like what to the mind? Yeah. This knowing sees that very clearly. Yeah. yeah. There are no mistakes because all Which, of it is yeah. chosen from the true self. The, the one that you truly are chooses the whole lot. Yeah. It creates yeah. the whole lot for the experience. Now, when um, when we start to recognise this and see this, we don't need so much of the invitations, let's say. Yeah. But the invitations are a gift from the self to the self. So if um, a, a parent is annoying us, if a husband is not, um, doesn't have, uh, you know, doesn't respect our boundaries, uh, if a child is um, born with uh, what looks like ADHD, autism, all of it is chosen from the awareness. Uh, it yeah. doesn't mean uh, that we don't do anything about it, right? So if something happens here, for example, um, for example, my son was born with an illness and um, I knew eventually, uh, it, it was recognized that actually uh, that illness was stopping me in my tracks to come in into myself because I was far too looking out there yeah, yeah my life needed yeah. to look like this it needed to be yeah. perfect in that way x y and z so my son yeah. a aided along with lots of other things aided me to come back to myself and see you know the importance of of this this self-realization yeah. but it also meant that I took him to professionals I took him to the hospital when he needed it I took him to um, play therapist, stuff like that. But the play of life still went on. Yeah. Even though, even those people, the hospital workers, the play therapist, X, Y, and Z, they're all part of consciousness helping. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can see it, although it's, it's, it's strange to get used to, but I understand. Yeah, so, so there's no time limits on this. And it seems like I'll, I get a little bit here, a little bit of this armor falls off, off here, a little bit of this weight falls off there. <gasps> Actually, that's a bit fearful. All of it's okay. Yeah. Like I was saying to Julie yeah. before, it's like a recalibration. Yeah. yeah. You're, the true self is watching all this play out. You don't need to get it right, right away because there is no getting it right away. You can see through this immediately. Or it can look like it takes a little bit of time. Okay. It's having that deep trust that everything is okay. So can I ask if I have a worry just now about someone, can I change that to have a better outcome? So if you have a worry about somebody that's poorly, you mean? Um, just a family member and their... Their, their health just now yeah um is that only my worry could that be can i perceive that to be better than it seeming you can see that every it's a difficult one because when i say this it looks like marianne might beat herself up about this right because everyone's chosen you're like why would i choose that Oh, yeah, nice. exactly. When it's seen from the awareness, everything's okay. The body may have like, you know, uh, a sadness. There may be that I go round and give them comfort. Um, I may ring a hospital for this person or whatever, right? Mm. But the fear in that is to be faced. And yes, in facing that fear, gently, over mm. and over absolutely anything can shift this life is pliable like play-doh okay. yeah 
yeah that's good that is good <laughs> that's so what i was talking can shift yeah so if somebody yeah. has um an illness that requires a, a a medication and we're told it's it's for life that medication will still be taken but the more yeah. that you trust in self-realization something may come into the picture that changes that a better medication a um a transplant a pioneering operation yeah right yeah. anything can shift yeah i'm getting the feeling just having acceptance um yes utter just, utter acceptance yeah as doesn't a start. mean you just sit back in a chair and not do anything yes you yeah. may need to go around and see this person give them comfort um, you know, ring a hospital for them, whatever that looks like in your experience. But the behind it, behind it is an acceptance that everything is happening as it's meant to be happening. Now, if we're fearful and neurotic, which is fine, if that comes up, that's to be witnessed in order for it to dissolve, which may take time. Yeah, yeah. there may be layers to it. And there may be added fear to it. All of this gently, gently is watched, witnessed, dissolved eventually, and anything yeah. can change in that person's. It's not, it's not on your shoulders to do anything, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess what I'm saying that I have in mind um, loved ones I've lost, some who are on their way, and sort of thinking, if this is my story. Can I not change that story for them? Or do I just accept that so, it's going to be? Yeah, so it looks like there's an investment in the outside here, which is fine. What you're looking for is coming backwards. Once you see who you are, who you truly are, through this uh, understanding, through these calls, meditation, and witnessing and watching the emotions that come up in the body as you go about your day, yeah? Mm -hmm. The more that, that this body, uh, the conditioning of this body dissolves and mm. you start to open up more to see who you truly are, the outside will automatically look different. Yeah? yeah. It may mm. look exactly the same, but it will be very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah. The fear, the fear dissolves with it. Yeah, I think my only, yeah. we can help that along by when these waves of fear come up, mm -hmm. they come up and they pass. Eventually, another one may yeah. come, a little one may come, a big crashing wave may come, but they're all mm -hmm. witnessed and watched. Now, as Julie said, she got caught up in hers, which is. Again, absolutely fine. If you yeah. fall off the horse, you get back on. That's gone. Yesterday's gone. The last minute's gone. We start afresh. Yeah. 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 If yeah. we notice that we're like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, I shouldn't have done this, that's to be witnessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Because that's it's... this character believing that it should be a different way. Yeah. Exactly. Does I understand happen? that that last sentence very much helps. Thank yeah. you. So Thank let you. go of time frames. Yeah. Very important. Two things. Let go of time limits mm -hmm. and witness. Watch mm -hmm. and trust. Mm -hmm. Trust, trust, trust. OK. Thank you very much. We're not looking for all love and light here either. I'm just wanting to mention this. Um, you know, if somebody is disrespectful to you, it's okay to use your voice and to talk to them about it. Absolutely yeah. okay. When yeah. we're in the awareness, when we when we truly see who we are, that still happens. But mm -hmm. it's more. Um, it's done in a more conscious way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than um, an egoic way, let's say. 
so yeah. it's not about them and us it's just about you know I'm, I'm not happy with this what you've done to me x y and z I just wanted to mention that I felt important to mention yeah yeah thank you no problem at all I'm just going to what time is it is our purpose right I'll go to Julie and then I'll come back to Marianne and Lucy okay um, yeah, so um, sometimes do you, um, I feel like if you don't listen to awareness, then it'll get louder um, with the messages that come through as to what you've got to do. So just before Christmas, when it was icy, I took my dogs out. I was rushing all the time, rushing. I started a new job in September and I was rushing and I knew um, my awareness was saying slow down and go within more, like slow down, slow down. And I wasn't listening. So I went out with my dogs and I slipped in the ice and I hurt my back and I carried on, carried on rushing, carried on rushing. Two days later, I fell again and I fractured my arm and I had to stop. Like it slowed me down completely. Mm. And it was almost as if, right, you stop, you you can't go. And I went into like a really deep, deep awareness after that. And in the long run now, it's actually has slowed me down. Like, mm. and it's done me a favour because I don't feel like I have to be doing because I've always been very like rigid with everything. Mm. It's made me, even though it was not nice and it hurts, it's made me um, stop. And, um, you know, like you were saying about with your son um, being poorly, like it made you go within. It, it just stopped me and I just went within. Mm. I couldn't move for two days. I got ill for two days with a bug. I had a fractured arm, but it just like I had like a... a like a recalibration it was just like how deep I went into the yeah. awareness yeah and it's almost like if you don't listen then it sounds awful but you will listen yeah so that so there's no mistakes there's no punishments yeah yeah and yeah. it very much to the human mind the human body you know that it looks like there's punishments it looks like you know x y and z um mm. that me falling over is you know a real ball ache let's say yeah um because you know I wanted to go out tomorrow or I've got work or this is the most important thing and life will bring you back in any way it can yeah but it doesn't have to be in fracture in your arm no. yeah if it you can... listen when you're here then you listen and it doesn't have to yeah it's extreme it can be coming on calls like this um meditation slowing down it, it sounds really it sounds really strange but i'm glad it happened because it it yeah. made me yeah. really think about things and it yeah. made me more aware it, it, it sent me even deeper yeah into yeah. awareness absolutely and it will do because yeah. it you know because you're creating it all Mm -hmm. yeah for that purpose and it, um, you know, it, there's yeah. nothing but perfection here there's absolutely nothing but perfection here but but if you break your arm you're going to feel it if you break mm -hmm. your arm you're going to be it's not favorable to break your arm no, no. um it's going to be painful to the body but there are no mistakes mm -hmm. and then julie i would imagine when do you know what i need to slow down Mm. take some time for myself and, and even when and even when it's healed it slowed me down because I'm like well actually I can slow down there's nothing going to happen yeah. and you know like I'm not going to like explode or I'm not going to that's okay I can just go with the flow and just just uh, listen to everything that comes through yeah and um, and I know I mentioned it before Jolene I'm so sorry but I'm going to have to go um, and yeah, that's fine is that all fine. right thank yeah. you Thank you uh, so thank much you, everyone. It's so lovely to see you. Yes, it's great to see you. Oh, all. Thank see you for it's so nice to connect with people who understand and are on the same yeah. kind of path. So it thank is. you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okie dokie. So, so another one from Marianne. Is our purpose to learn before our next life? Okay. So, one second. Thank you. 
is our purpose to learn before our next life? So next lives and past lives and this life are all an appearance. So the awareness that you truly are is observing it all. Okay, so it looks like there's reincarnation. It looks like there's past lives and future lives and this life. All of them are being observed from the awareness. So because it's a paradox, yes, when you get to the end of what looks like this life as Marianne, if realization hasn't happened, then you, yes, you may come back in a different form. Okay. Yeah. So there's yeah. no learning to do. It's all invitation to remember that which you already know. Yeah, mm -hmm. you already know everything that I'm telling you. It's just that in this life, there's been conditioning from whatever, parents, mm -hmm. television, society, that tells you it's not this. Yeah. yeah. So what we're doing here is we're seeing through that BS, that bullshit that's been told to you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking through it to see the truth of who you are. Yeah. And it can look rocky, it can look scary, it can look whatever. It's it's that trust. And as I said, all I can do is, is share with you what I know and tell you the truth. I don't expect you to believe it, but in my experience, when I was um, you know, in deep fear and X, Y, and Z. It was a trust, trust, trust. I saw that other people could see something that I wasn't seeing. So mm -hmm. over anything else, I trusted in that. I trusted in this piece that people spoke about and this true self that I couldn't, what true self, you know? I trusted mm -hmm. that it was here and I just couldn't see it. Um, over anything else, over the fear. And I faced every trigger that came up. So whether I was out shopping, whether I was driving my car, whether I was with my child, didn't mean that things looked perfect. I might have got snappy with my child. I might have been late to an appointment and been annoyed about that. But everything was witnessed from a curious place. Just curious to what was going on in my body. Not like a, you know, it was just a, an allowing. It was a curiosity. Hmm, something's coming up here like that. It wasn't an analyzing. It was just a curious watching and allowing, accepting and giving it an open space to be there. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um... As I say, I feel it's a journey and I'm just learning as I go. Yeah, yeah. And that's, you're in the absolute perfect place. Yeah. As I said before, everything is a reflection helping you. So you said something before about not being good enough or something like that. What you've got to remember is that there's only you here. Everything else is a reflection. Everything else is helping. Yeah. So this is your focal yeah. point to all the mirror. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Take it day by day, moment by moment. Yeah. And definitely. It naturally, when we go to school, there's a learning process that happens. And you, you know, you have to do this, that, and the other, and you're taught this is an intuitive. So this is going to be seen on an intuitive level, and it happens, um, it happens inwardly. So it's not mind based, it's not brain based. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's um, hard for me to grasp a lot just now. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Um... So 
that's why I created Rest in the Mess. Yeah, that's because helpful. You're not on your own with that confusion. You're not yeah. on your own. And I've been there, real, yeah. like completely feeling confused. And then all of a sudden, poof, something's seen, and you may go back into that confusion. Yeah. Something's seen, and you may go back into that confusion, right? Yeah. But it's resting and being okay with that confused. I'm okay, even in this confusion. Any trying to fight mm -hmm. out of it, any trying to mm -hmm. look for this, any trying to get this, grasp this, is going to take you away from it. Yeah, that's that's what I needed to hear. Yeah, just accept, allow. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There is, there it's is always, a... always more simple than you think it is. Yeah. Always. That... If the mind's saying, oh, I need to get this, I need to get, no. No. Yeah. You already have it. You're already this. It's just that, you know, those um, them picture books that we used to have years ago and the, it looked like a flat picture and then you looked at it and squinted a certain way. And it, yes. it became 3D. Yeah, illusions. Yeah. And you were like, oh my God, I didn't see that before. Yeah. yeah it's like that. Right. That's that's making sense. Yeah. So yeah. you can't get that book and go, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna see this picture. It just happens when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's being yeah. okay with it. We didn't get that book yeah. and go, right, I need to analyze this, I need to read it, I need to do do do. Okay, I yeah. can't see it right now. I'm going to put the book down and carry yeah. on with my day and know that everything's okay. Everybody else is telling me they can see a 3D picture. Okay. And then later yeah. on, I'll have a, another look at it and it may, yeah. may, may come up. So it's, it's being okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, that that's so makes sense. And I think that's why I'm here today to hear the perspective of others. Yeah. Um that's that's what I need. To... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you very much. Right, let's have a look. It's in so Lucy's put it's impossible for me to not believe in the twin flame journey. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. That's part of your experience, um, you know, and if there's a belief there, then that will create in your reality. Um, I'm not saying that there's not such thing as a twin flame or a soulmate, but it's often misinterpreted. And if we're looking for that, uh, we're always going to be disappointed. So, for example, you may meet this absolute love of your life and call them a twin flame. If you do that from a conscious place, that's it. If you do it from an unconscious place and think that that's what you're looking for, then that's when, when it becomes tricky, sticky and uncomfortable. Every single person on this planet is your twin flame, let's say, even though that's a label. Everybody is your mirror helping you. Now, if you meet somebody that is a beautiful relationship, you can, you know, can certainly mess that up by, uh, by trusting in ego, by trusting in um the triggers and all that type of stuff if you meet somebody that's a beautiful relationship and you trust that that person is here to help you on a conscious level and you're here to do the same for them then it can blossom and bloom into an amazing thing that that can last and it can be a beautiful thing but it does not have to happen the true self does not need anything does not need anyone However, relationship is, is a beautiful thing. So, you know, if that happens, that's beautiful. Um, 
and if you lose somebody so if you find somebody that's you know absolutely amazing for you and your um your conditioning is causing uh, tarnishing that relationship then again you've brought that person in to trigger these invitations to dissolve that which you not you you are not such as anger possessiveness jealousy x y and z if that makes sense mm -hmm. So, anybody got a hand up before I go to Lucy again? No? Okay. Everybody okay? Yeah, good. Right. Lucy, you know it's been a very long journey for me and thanks to your help, I now feel at peace in my heart and soul, but I find it so hard to fit into society, like I don't belong anymore. People don't get me and I don't get them. How do I deal with that? So you've seen the truth of who you are that might not be seen all the time. Um, and in that, there is a seeing that actually there's no separation between anyone outside of us, okay? I think I've probably answered the question previously that anybody that comes into the picture that you feel you don't fit in with is an invitation. It's an invitation for you to see because the true self, the awareness, doesn't have any opinions on people. They don't put them into boxes. They don't want to change them. This body may, and that's absolutely fine, move away from somebody who's, you know, annoying you, abusing you, X, Y and Z. That's absolutely fine to do. It doesn't mean we sit there in a crowd of people that we don't we're not getting along with and letting them abuse us, not at all. As you deepen into this, people will come into the picture that might trigger you. Somebody might cut you up in the car and it's not taken seriously. It just, it's just a passing thing. We're not holding on to it and go in it means anything it doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything but if a fear if an annoyance comes up then that's to be faced and witnessed because it is passing in front of the awareness that you truly are and eventually it becomes like a bit like a playground so you will go out there without any fear, without any judgment at all, and anything can come into the picture, any person can come into the picture, and there's an utter, utter, beyond words, patience for everything and everyone. There's a love for everyone, no matter how they turn up. Eventually, when this is seen. which may take some time or it may come in an instant. Either way, it's how it's meant to be. There's no mistakes. Hope that helps. Can everybody hear me all right? Lucy said I'm a bit low. Julie, they are a reflection of us. We are all one. Yes, we are all one. So for example, if this was 
have to excuse me, I've not, not done my nails, but if this was the awareness, right, this part was the awareness, and the awareness chose to split off, let's say, into different bodies, right? And then we've got Stefan, we've got Joanna. But when you come back, we're all the one consciousness that chose to experience itself in varied form. So yes, we're all one because when we look back at who we truly are, the awareness that's observing this body, the awareness that's observing these emotions and this life and this world, the awareness is observing it all and that's who you are. You simply believe that you are one of these people. You have this body to experience it. You have this mind to experience it, but that's not who you truly are. And this one will bring up fear when this is said at times, because it's like, what? I'm not this. Oh my goodness. And that's absolutely fine. We witness and observe this fear that's coming up. If somebody is in a terrible state, it's absolutely okay to go and seek medical attention, therapies, whatever that looks like. But they are stepping stones, which I, I had many of before the true seeing. And you could have a mixture of both. So if somebody's in a terrible um, what appears to be mental state, terrible confusion. It's okay to, to, to dip into this as well as seek some other support. They're not needed, but it can help paradoxically. For me, nothing that pretty about a twin flame journey, but I understand. For me, nothing that pretty. I'm not sure what that means. Stefan, many people looking for soulmates do it because they believe the other person will make them whole. That is a mistake. Yes, it is. However, they definitely help you. And as I said before, um, if both are really, really trusted in this journey, if the two are really trusting in this journey, it can be a beautiful union. Um, not only that, but you may go your whole life with somebody who doesn't awaken, but is actually a really good person, is actually a really fun person to be around, is actually, you know, cuddles up with you and watches a movie or goes to the cinema with you but they never ever get this. That's absolutely fine too. They don't need to awaken. It can look in any way it, it does. But if there's somebody that comes into the picture that's not very nice to you, it's absolutely okay to move away from them. But we do that, it, it, it becomes a doing without a blaming. It's not a point in a finger. It's just okay, that's not, it's not what I want to experience. I'll move away. And there may be pain that goes with that. But that all passes. But yeah, um, another person doesn't, um, doesn't make us whole. But union is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful to have relationship. Just like, you know, I'm sat here talking to you. You're talking back to me. That's a beautiful thing that's happening in this human form. You know, it's a it's a lovely thing to have. Um, yeah. uh, Lucy, we don't have the same view about that, but it's OK. Yes, it is absolutely OK to have to not have that same view. Right. So Lucy said, I isolate myself because there's peace here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. If you want to be on your own and isolated, that's absolutely okay. Um, if you would prefer that you 
had, um, you know, you could go out there and mix with people. And the, the deeper that you go into your self-realization process, you will be able to. I mean, for example, on this side here, I go out there and I will just not have any expectation. There's no expectation here. I'll meet a myriad of different um, characters. Some of them are like nuts. Some of them are really lovely. There might be a little old lady that wants to chat to me. There might be a guy that shouts at me because my driving's rubbish. There might be all different things. Um, and an emotion might come up here. The body might get tired and I need to come home and have a sleep or whatever but none of it is taken seriously. There may be the guy that shouted at me for driving rubbish. These are just examples, by the way, uh, that I tell him off back. There may be that I just can't be bothered because it's just funny. Mm, yeah, if anybody wants to ask me any more on that bit, that's that's fine. I'm not really sure what else to say about that, but you know, this life is here to be lived and um, yeah. Hard for me to explain next time I'll speak instead of texting. Yeah, that's fine, Lucy. I know you're feeling under the weather today. That's absolutely fine. It's like I feel all the pain everywhere. Yes. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's very common. And we could say it's the collective consciousness. Um, but again, the more that you face that, because consciousness is one thing. It's one thing that looks like it's separate. Right. So you're feeling the pain of your process and all this stuff that's going on out there in the world, all these different people, what looks like there's different people, the more that you deepen in your own process, the more that theirs is going to. Simple as that. You don't have to do anything for those people out there. It's an inner job. Once peace is seen and witnessed here and anchored here, all out there, there's nothing to fix. There's absolutely nothing to fix. It's an illusion that we're believing in based on our own emotion. And this, this is seen when it's seen and it's heard when it's heard. We let go of time limits, allow it to resonate within, allow it to sink. But yeah, um, if you're, you know, if you're isolating, if you're in pain, th this is, it's okay. Um, you know, there may be a day when you think I want to just go and see somebody or chat to somebody, that's okay too. But, you know, life may have put you in that situation to, to give yourself some time alone. Um, a lot of people that come to me, including myself, found themselves um during periods of being alone and that's absolutely okay and actually you you know you're you're joining in here so um you can never truly be alone right so we've got 15 minutes until it's four o'clock is there anything from anybody else that anybody wants to say Anybody want to ask anything? I can. Joanna, are you okay? Hi. Hi. I know. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm listening. And I'm listening. And I'm drawing. I'm sorry. So forgive me, but I am listening. And I'm hearing. I'm not sure what I'm hearing, but I'm, I'm sure I'll process that later. But um, my question, I guess, is when 
and it, you know my journey has been mm-hmm. all all over the place but um when does the spirit aspect of things like fade away <laughs> And not that I'm saying that I want it to go away because I do love them and they, you know, they're awesome. But I, the whole, it makes me confused because I, it's like, I know that that's part of the ego. And I know that as the observer, I guess I don't know. I don't know. And then that's my question. When does, does that ever go away? Is that, does that make so sense? <laughs> I know that you have an experience here of where you can hear spirit um, guiding you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And it's getting a bit much. No. No, I don't mind it. Okay. It's actually funny. Okay. But what do you mean when it, when does it go away? What do you mean? Does it, it, I mean, does it ever, is that like part of my um, consciousness just creating spe- like myself? So there's only one consciousness. Right. And everything is created from that. So there's no separation to anything. Okay. So the reason that you've got that coming up is just to assist you. So there's no different, no difference between those what appear to be spirits guiding you. There's no difference between that, me speaking on here, and the husband leaving the toilet seat up. Because all of it is guiding you. Right? All of it is. I don't want to say teacher because I don't like that word, but all of it is is an invitation. Yeah. Some yeah. of them look more special than others. Some of them look mundane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But all of it is the magical mystery. So if you walk outside your back door and you trip over your dog, that's an invitation if you're if you've got a deep anger and you're a type of person you're going to beat your dog up right this is an extreme example yeah no I know so you go out your back door you trip over your dog and you're the type of person who's got this much anger from your conditioning the dog is going to trigger that to come up to be seen yeah so there's no mistakes the dog walking in front of the door as you come out and you go flying and uh, this anger comes up that anger is being triggered to be seen and dissolved right and that mm-hmm. may may take a lot of times i'm going somewhere with this don't worry no, and then i'm on this call with you you're asking me questions and i'm replying i am you replying to you i am the mirror replying to you this is non-personal remember this is about the consciousness bringing its awareness back to itself and it uses that in by using a myriad of characters and then you've got spirit what looks like spirit so I look like a human this looks like a dog this looks like spirit it's all consciousness coming off to remind itself that it's consciousness. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When that's not needed anymore, it might die down. So in my case, there was three months of having really, really deep psychic abilities. Very, very, very clear, where I could have probably been a million trillionaire (laughs) if it carried on, right? Mm -hmm. But it stopped dead in its tracks and the reason for that was it opened my eyes that there's more going on here and it also said but that's not you but that's not who you're meant to be that's not what you're meant to be doing 
we're going to show you something, we're going to take it away, and that's it, done, dusted. So it will go when it's when it's ready to go. That's the thing. But the other thing is that you you know you can just simply observe that and you know mm -hmm. not get so caught up in it. Oh Which yeah, no, yeah. Um, it's like what somebody else was saying earlier about how um, I guess she was having an argument with her mom and she could feel herself um, getting angry and she knew what she was doing. And it was just like, like yesterday, the same thing kind of happened to me. I was um, on the phone with somebody and I was getting angry with my mother and I heard it heard in my head, calm down. Why are you mad? Like I heard it and I'm like, you're mad at the wrong person. You shouldn't even be mad. This is dumb. Like I, I heard it and I was like, okay, all right calm down <laughs> like I had to like take a breath and was like yeah yeah so it's stop mm -hmm. stop yeah that feeling may may reside and it's not about oh my god I shouldn't have done that that's awful I'm really bad but that's right. not who you are that stop is come back home who are you you're the observer of these characters that are doing this stuff that's annoying you get caught up in it, it's okay but the more that you recognize this this coming home to yourself this coming home to yourself the less that those triggers they get this they, you see them quicker yeah that helped thank you thank you You're yes welcome. it did thank so you lovely to see you i know i can <laughs> <laughs> um so let's doesn't look like there's anything else. So let's just. Um, so if you um, what what to do now? So obviously, paradoxically, there's nothing to do. But if you want to go to my website, the blog's there. Read it, browse it at your leisure. The blogs are small, they're short. If you don't understand them, that's OK. Use the deep listening video as often as you like it's very helpful and um, that's in conjunction with the blog um, you can ask questions on my blog and I will reply um, there is the there's a few meditations out there on my YouTube I'm absolutely rubbish at putting more content out there but I am now uh, settled into my new home so that's what's going to come soon is more content on my website do use the resources if you want to. You don't have to. It's just a suggestion. Um, yeah, reach out if you need to. Um, and if you can commit to daily meditation, do. But like I said before, all of it can be a meditation. Um, you know, as you're walking about your day, noticing the emotions that are coming up, noticing the judgments that you're making about yourself, uh, noticing any paranoia, anything like that. We never know truly what's going on. Um, so just be open and aware and, um, you know, just be open to the fact that actually we don't know anything. I know nothing. This mind this brain will try to figure stuff out all the time. The knowing, this seeing, it comes from within. I don't know where it comes from. So we put words on it, such as oneness, consciousness, um, whatever it is, but it's very, very clear. It's very, very clear. It's just is, it's a knowing, it doesn't think. Thinking will come up and that's seen. Emotions will come up and they're seen. And it may get very tricky at times, no doubt about it. And that's okay. So thank you all so much for being here. If you want, we'll just take a moment to close our eyes. Deep breath if you need to. Just notice the emotions in this body. 
Notice the whole of the body sitting or lying here. Notice any sounds around you. Notice that the mind likes to go off into thinking. This is absolutely common, perfectly natural, and nothing has gone wrong. The mind may go off into planning, trying to work something out, into confusion, and that's absolutely fine. The moment that we notice that this is happening with zero judgment at all, just notice with curiosity and just bring yourself back just to the body, just to the breath, just using that as an anchor point. And the mind may go off several times throughout your day. Sometimes it may go off into a whole big story, a big spiral, and you've been off somewhere for five minutes or longer. The moment of noticing, no matter how far and how wide and how long it's been gone for, the moment you notice that the mind has gone off somewhere with zero judgment, just notice with a curiosity and then bring yourself back to the breath, to the body. Notice the belly. Can we loosen the belly a little? Notice the jaw. Can we notice the jaw? Just loosening, loosening a little. Sometimes we hold on there. Notice the rise and the fall of the shoulders. Notice the hands and the feet and the head. Any of these can be used as an anchor point if we notice that the mind has gone off into stories. We're giving ourselves permission now Take some time for rest as best we can this afternoon or whatever time it is for you there. Allow ourselves to hydrate with some water. If anything comes up for you, any confusion, know that this is okay. It's absolutely perfectly common. We allow ourselves to take this meditation forward into the next part of our day. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for being here. It's been lovely. And I will hopefully see you all soon. Bye. Love you all so much. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jolly. Love You're you. You're so welcome. Love you. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.